Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. You can always give us a call, 208-991-4783. And please cast your vote once a month for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. Well, right now on my uh, iPod, I'm listening to and enjoying... The Nero Wolf novel, and be a villain. This one is particularly fascinating because it deals with a murder on the set of a radio show during uh, Radio's Golden Age. The novel was released in 1948. And be a villain is just one of many Nero Wolf short stories, collections, or novels that are available with Audible. Audible, of course, has got a lot of other titles of in all sorts of categories and genres. You can try Audible out free for two weeks and get a free audiobook. You can even download uh, And Be a Villain as your free audiobook. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash oldtimeradio for your free trial. But let's go ahead and we will take a listen to today's Nero Wolf adventure, The Deadly Sellout. Ladies and gentlemen, the ringing of that phone bell means mystery, adventure. Nero Wolf's office, Archie Goodwin speaking. You're up. And you've lost your... Oh. Archie, the answer is no. Hold on a second. The answer to what is no, Mr. Wolf? I should not attempt to find a blonde for anyone. You've got the man on the phone a little wrong, Mr. Wolf. He's not looking for a blonde, he's looking for a prize fighter. <laughs> Indeed, have him come here. Okay. Mr. Wolf will see you at eight. So long. I was all set to argue with you about taking the case. You you gave in too fast. Nonsense. I'm fascinated by the thought of anyone misplacing a prize fighter. They're usually quite large, aren't they? They are. But what this guy is worried about is not only finding his boy, but finding him alive. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the bulkiest, balkiest, smartest, and most unpredictable detective in the world. That chair-born genius, Nero Wolfe, created by Rex Stout and brought to you in a new series of adventures over this NBC network in the person of Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. case of the deadly sellout. That's what my boss, Nero Wolf, called it. And it almost meant curtains for the firm of Wolf and Goodwin. But let me give it to you straight right from the beginning. Although you ought to know that it wasn't until it was all over that I knew the very beginning of it myself. It all started in the New York flat of one Brock Rainey. Yes? My name is Jerry Fay. I'm supposed to know you? Being a very good friend of Pepe Gatto's, it's time you got to know me. May I come in? Oh, sure. You've got a problem, Miss Fay? Pepe took a fall at the garden last night against a coffee and bum named Eubanks, right? As far as I know, Sister Gatto met his match. Please, Mr. Rainey, do me a favor. Skip the sausage meat. It happens I saw the 1200 bucks you counted out to him to take a quick dive in the first. Mm, you did. How else would I know? Okay, then here's my wrist. Slap it, Miss Fay. I'm a bad boy. Now, look, who's kidding who? I don't care if Pepe makes himself a few deals on the side. I should worry whether he gives those meat eaters on the benches a run for the ducats. What's it to me? If you're not worried, Sugar Plum, then neither am I. Also, I'm a very busy man. Not too busy to pay off, I hope. Pay off? To who? To me. For what? For keeping it to myself that you collected five grand from the Eubanks crowd for getting Pepe to take that dive. Certain people might not like to hear it. Miss Fay. Yeah? Drop dead. I don't think we understand each other. Which is just as well. Now get out of here. something Blow, else. bimbo. Okay, Mr. Rainey. Have it your way. I'll go find someone with a more sympathetic ear. Someone like Lawson. Arnold F. Lawson. So long. Wait. Where does Lawson come into this? You asking a Stalin. Lawson dropped a sizable piece of change on last night's two-step. No. Close the door, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. to be exact. 
That's a lot of corn to lose because a cheap fight manager arranges a frame. At least Arnold Lawson might think so. Sit down. Who's tired? Look, Mr. Rainey, it goes very simply in only one way. Lawson at yet knows from nothing except that your boy Gatto lost the fight. He may suspect, but he don't know. And he really don't have to know. Glad to hear you say that. And I'll be glad to see the shade of 3,000 long green banknotes. How much? You heard me, three grand. Get out. Okay, I'm going. To the next phone and call Lawson. Look, Jerry, give me time, huh? I haven't got that kind of dough right now. I Tell gotta... it to Lawson. When he gets through with you, you won't need any kind of dough. You know, I've got Gatto set for a go with Mellish, the title contender. Gatto can take him. Please believe me, he's going to take him. So? So after what happened in the Eubanks fight, the odds on Gatto will be like a war debt. We can clean up. Listen, we can make Heel, a... I wouldn't trust you from 11.59 to midnight. Get it up. Now. I'll give you six hours. After that, Lawson. So long. <laughs> Come on. Hello? Hello. Rainey, this is Gatto. Hiya, baby. Look, the boys dropped in on me at the office at Mindy's. Lawson wants to see me. What? Lawson? Look, bum, I'm the one with the cauliflower ears. You heard me. What do I do? Nothing. But... Don't uh, go near him. Stay home. Let me take care of it. How? How? I what do you do? I don't know yet, baby, but I'll find a way. How did he find out? Your girlfriend. What? She wouldn't do that. She hates the guy. Hate him, I love him. She told him. I, I can't believe it. I... I suggest you call our little doll Jerry and give her your regards for the double cross. Meanwhile, stay put in your apartment. Don't move. But, Rainy. Hello. Hello. What on earth are you mumbling about? The high cost of blunt. Indeed. Oh, you can say that again. I have no intention of doing so. Okay, be smug. But there must have been a time even in your life when knickknacks from Tiffany figured on the budget. Phooey. Uh, not to mention steak dinners and champagne. Or what did you feed your girls? Peppermint lozenges? Nonsense. Nonsense? They preferred lime. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm dying and he laughs. <laughs> Mr. Wolf? Yes? I have decided that you are giving me a raise. Archie, this is not a period in which uh, unilateral decisions are wise. So I'll be a dope and get a raise, huh? As for your future mental attainments, you may be right. As for raise... You want to drive me to gambling? Like betting on fights or going... Okay, it's the doorbell and I'm answering it. The name's Rainey. You're Goodwin? I'm Goodwin. Come in. Is Wolf in? Mr. Wolf is always in, unlike prize fighters, I guess. Come on. Thank you. Mr. Wolf, this is Mr. Rainey, the man who lost his prize fighter. How do you do, sir? I'm not doing so good. Mr. Wolf, you got to help me. That would depend. On what? The fee. <laughs> I digress. Your problem is what, Mr. Rainey? Mr. Wolf, I manage a fighter named Gatto. Maybe you've heard of him. I have not. However, that is of little significance. You are having difficulty with this Mr. Gatto? I'm not having difficulty with him. I can't find him. Uh, maybe you better let me give you the whole picture, huh? Very well. Well, Gatto is an up-and-coming boy, Mr. Wolf. He had a little upset last week with a guy named Eubanks. But everybody knows, in spite of that, Gatto's heading for the big time. I think he'll prove that when he goes against Mellish. Mr. Mellish being another pugilist, huh? Uh, that's right, Mr. Wolf. Now, Peppy, that's Gatto. Peppy was due at the turf club this afternoon to meet the opposition management and go over the setup. He was due, but he didn't show. I waited all afternoon, and then I started the phone calls and taxis. The results? No results. I combed every joint I ever knew him to buy a beer in, and the score was zero. Matter of fact, nobody's even seen him for four days. You would have tried the gymnasiums, naturally? I did. Does this pugilist have a home? Yeah, 206 A Rathburn Street, a penthouse on the roof. He was not at home during all this time? It's where I tried first. It was empty as a bank on Saturday afternoon. I see. 
And you want me to find him for you? If Pepe blows this fight, Mr. Wolf, it'll ruin his career. And the preservation of his career is worth a good deal to you? I got a check for two grand right here. Archie? I'll get it. Two thousand dollars. Very well, Mr. Rainey, I should take immediate steps. I got a cab waiting outside. We can get started right away. We? Oui. <laughs> I should remain here. But how do you expect to... Archie. Yes, Mr. Wolf. You will leave with Mr. Rainey. I need information. You might try the Rathbun Street penthouse to start with. But I've already been there. Lord, your apologies, Mr. Rainey. Suppose you restrict your activities to pugilists. Archie is a trained observer. You are not. Archie, you will pick up whatever you can in Garter's apartment. I especially suggest a careful check on his wardrobe. Wardrobe? If his clothes are missing, Mr. Rainey, it would indicate that he left voluntarily and deliberately. For whatever reasons he may have had. If they are not, Archie, you will phone me from the apartment after your investigation is over. Okay. I shall in the meantime devote some thought to the subject. Huh? For two grand, all you're going to do is devote some thought? Mr. Rainey, if I were not a modest man, I would point out to you that you're getting quite a... <laughs> a bargain. <laughs> Gatto? Gatto? He's not here. I told you that. I was up here before. He left the door unlocked? I had a key. Guess I forgot to lock up after I left. Now, let's look around. Bathroom? Yeah. Hmm. Empty. Hmm. Nice penthouse. Is that a closet? Yeah. What do you think? He's playing hide and seek? Try it. Okay. Anything in there? Nothing I'm looking for. What's that you found? A hat. Well, let's see. Lady's hat. Yeah, a smart and expensive. Label reads a madam, yet an original. <laughs> that bunch of lace and feathers cost somebody a fast half a hundred. Yeah, probably one of his girls left it behind. And maybe she'll call for it. Come on, we'll take a gander out on the roof. I took a gander out there. It's bare as a bone. Uh-uh. What have we got over there by the chimney? Where? Over there. Uh, just an old awning. Got blown down in the storm last month. Uh, be right with you. What are you doing? Looking under it. Oh, brother. You, you found him? Yeah, we found him, chum. A little late. Two holes in his dorsal development and dead as a clay pigeon. Yeah. Well, what have you got to say? Well, now at least the bookies will cancel all bets. We both save our dough. Yeah. I got a phone, Mr. Wolf. And there he was, Mr. Wolf, under the old canvas awning. Hmm. Where's the hat? Oh, this is it. Mm hmm. That's it, boss. <laughs> Snazzy number, no? Where'd you find it? On the floor of the closet. You're right, Archie. Frothy little bit of millinery, caprice. Mm hmm. Have you any idea whose it may be, Mr. Rainey? I wish I did. You'll have to find out. Well, how, boss? The hat is an original. See, the label under the band reads, a Madame Yetta original. Tomorrow morning, Archie, you will interview Madame Yetta. Yes, boss. And discover in your inimitable fashion for whom she made this chapeau. Hello? Archie again, Mr. Wolf. Per your instructions, I have just talked to Madame Yetta. What did you learn? Madame Yetta tells me she made that hat for a Mrs. Lawson. Who is Mrs. Lawson? The wife of an ex-beer hustler is in the chips and puts on airs. Lives in a penthouse of the Bradford Arms. I was just about to hop a cab and go up there, boss. Good. Keep this up, Archie. And through sheer practice, you may yet develop to a full-blown intelligence. Well, I'm trying, Mr. Wolf. And after the Lawsons, I do what? Return here immediately and hurry. How do you do, Mr. Lawson? Oh, Mr. Goodwin. My secretary tells me you're a detective. My boss might argue with you on that, Mr. Lawson. Your boss? It happens I work for Nero Wolf. I see. And you wish to see me about... About this hat. Hat? Oh, I see, yeah. Well, Mr. Goodwin, please believe me, I never wear hats like that. 
Would your wife be likely to say the same? My wife? Just what are you getting at? Would I seem too nosy if I asked how well you and your wife know Pepe Gatto? How well do we know who? Pepe Gatto. The pug? No, no, not such a pug. No, huh? <laughs> I lost 25000 on him in the Eubanks fight. You ask me, he laid down like a dog. And did you talk it over with him? Talk it over with him? Never seen the man in my life. Not even at the fight? No, I placed a bet over the telephone. I'd scarcely have anything to do with a character like Gatto, Mr. Goodwin. You surely won't from here on out, Mr. Larson. What do you mean? Gatto is dead. You don't say. He was murdered last night. Murdered? And what would you say, Mr. Larson, if I told you that this hat is your wife's and that it was found in a closet in Gatto's apartment? Now, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Are you implying... Not implying. That... Facts are sticking out. What time was this dumb brute done away with? Oh, I'd set it at somewhere between 5 and 7 p.m. last night. Well, you said it very conveniently. Thanks. Why? My wife and I drove out of the city at 4.30 yesterday afternoon. Didn't get back until 2 this morning. And this hat? It took wings and flew into Gatto's closet? Is that the answer? No, that's not the answer. Then what is? This is... A month and a half ago, I was with Celia on a bus top. She was wearing that hat, and the wind blew it off her head. I see. And from there, we figured that somebody picked it up, and it finally wound up at Gotham. You can figure anything you please. Personally, I don't feel in any way obligated to figure anything. Darling, I was just on my way out, and... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were busy. Yes, I am busy, Celia. Wait a minute. He's not all right. Run along busy. now, dear. You'll be late. But I want to talk Run to you. Run along, Celia. Yes, darling. Sorry. I'll see you later. Beautiful. Really beautiful. I've always thought so, Goodwin. You uh, didn't give me much of a chance to talk to her, did you, Larson? If I didn't, it's for your own good. My good? I don't get it. Celia's a sensitive person, and I won't have her bothered. <laughs> And do you mean to tell me you let him scare you? Let him scare me? Say, will you stop being so fearless with my life? The guy said, don't bother my wife, so I didn't bother his wife. It was that simple. Apparently his wife was not blonde. Answer the phone, Archie. No, you answer it. Now you've hurt my feelings. Oh, well. Hello? I want to speak to Mr. Nero Wolf. Mr. Wolf speaking. Oh? Is it true that you're interested in the Gatto murder? Who are you, and how do you know he's been murdered? The second question is none of your business. And as for the first, call me Jerry. J-E-R-I. How do you do, Jerry? J-E-R-I. Where do you call? Would you like to come to an auction? An auction? You know, going, going, gone, to the highest bidder. And what are you placing on the auction block, Miss Jerry? A few facts. All in good condition and guaranteed to make it a cinch to snag the Gatto killer. Sounds promising. Only you'll have to bid against real money. May I have the address of the auction room? You'll have no trouble finding it. Your assistant was there last night. Where? The penthouse on top of 206A Rathburn Street. The big item goes on at four bells. Yeah? Who is it? Man named Wolf sent me. Just a sec. Hmm. You're Jerry, huh? I was expecting the man named Wolf. Unfortunately for me, honey, when he's expected, I usually show up. Come on in. You? See, I'm the legs of the combination. He's the brains. It makes, uh, makes a nice division of labor. I see. You came in plenty of time. On the nose is our custom. Where are the rest of the bidders? Any second now. Mm-hmm. How many besides me are coming? One. Small auction. But big action. How'd you happen to decide on this? I knew Gatto pretty good. And you were fond of him pretty good, huh? How did you guess? Well, you've got a key to this place of his or you couldn't let yourself in. It adds, no? Gee, you should have been a detective. Just what I keep telling Mr. Wolf. Look, tell me, Jerry, darling, this other person who is coming to the auction, who? The killer. You don't say. You sure the killer isn't here already? Look, I didn't kill him. Ah. Uh. The story you would like me to believe is that you witnessed the killing, huh? Called the killer and Mr. Wolf and said, come on, kids, you can get me either to talk or shut up, depending on who pays the most, Then it? Something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, prove you know what you're talking about. 
Who is the killer? Is it Block Rainey? Should also have your head examined, pretty boy. I talk for dough and only for dough. Not that I'm mercenary or anything, okay. but... Okay. Okay, tell me this. How come you saw the killer in the act? Simple. I was here with Gatto. Called me to come see him. While I was here, the shot came through the window there from the roof. You know something, sweetheart? What? I can't understand how a girl like you, a pretty nice girl under all that uh, paint and powder and Broadway shellac, how you could do a thing like this. You were in love with Gatto, I know that, everybody does. And still you're willing to keep your mouth shut if the killer pays enough. How come? Hmm? What's the matter, honey? Did I hit a tender spot? I... I don't think you understand. Sure, I was in love with the goof. Then along comes this other dame. She's rich and beautiful and she has everything to give him. Oh, do I know her? Of course you do. She... Jerry! Uh... Jerry. He was just about to tell me, and then the shot came through the window from the roof, boss. It's a flat roof outside. You didn't, I suppose, see the murderer? No. I caught Jerry in my arms by the time I laid her down on the couch and got out on the roof. The killer was gone. Get right over here and bring our client with you, if you can find him. Rainey? That's right. He has a right to be in on the kill. Okay, boss. But keep away from that beer till I get there. Don't be impertinent. I should be busy phoning Mr. and Mrs. Lawson. Meanwhile, I want them here, too. Besides, one bottle won't do any harm. Ah, there they are. Let them in, Archie. You remain seated, Mr. Rainey. Okay, Mr. Wolf. Well, come in, Mr. Lawson. Come in. Mr. Wolf here? He's here. Nice of you to come. Anything to help the law. Ah, Mr. Lawson. Your wife didn't come. Uh, no, Mr. Wolf. She was out when you called. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. I left word with the butler, however. Mr. Lawson, about 20 minutes ago, a girl named Jerry Fay was killed. So? She was killed in your neighborhood, in a flat formerly occupied by one Pepe Gatto. Well, where would that be? Maybe your wife knows where the flat would be. How dare you, sir? No histrionics, please. Where was your wife when the girl was killed? I'm advising you that if there is an alibi, now's the time to state it. I wouldn't humiliate Celia by alibying for her. Then the police will pick her up. But she didn't kill this girl, Mr. Wolf. You have reasons for that opinion? The best of reasons. I'd be grateful if you'd state them and let me be the judge of their excellence. Well, one should do. This one. Celia's out in the country visiting her mother. No. Oh. Does that settle it? Possibly. What's her mother's telephone number? Why, uh... Merely a routine check. Well, can't you take my word? I'll take her mother's number. Well, Mr. Lawson? I'm sorry. I... I hoped you'd buy the story. What do you mean? Mother's been dead for ten years. I see. Well, I don't. What's the idea? It's known as marital devotion, Archie. <laughs> I suppose you realize, Mr. Lawson, that in shielding your wife, you're aiding and abetting a murderer? I, I haven't stopped to realize anything. When Goodwin brought me that hat, I didn't know what to say. Oh, you pitched me a curve then, too. Well, I suppose you might call it that, but... And she didn't lose the chapeau off a bus top. No, but you've got to understand. Celia's the dearest thing in life to me. Yeah, so is a lady rattlesnake to its husband. I suggest it is time for you to be objective in this matter, Mr. Lawson. What do you want to know? Tell us where she can be found. I, I have no idea. When is she expected to return home? Never. Oh? You see, we, we had an argument. I doubt that I'll ever see her again. Then we are quite on our own, Archie. To do what? To make a journey to Gatto's apartment. Gatto's apartment? She probably has a key to that popular abode. But she wouldn't go there, boss. On the contrary, I am of the opinion that that's just where she would go. Give me my hat. Don't tell me you're going to stir yourself. Ah, it's a most unpleasant necessity, Archie. But the lady in question is dangerous and not at all hesitant about indiscriminate gunplay. Get out the car, Archie. We'll make the journey to Rathburn Street penthouse with the hope that Celia Lawson will show up in time to mourn her lost love. Uh, uh, you want me to go along with you too, Mr. Wolf? Yes, indeed, Mr. Rainey, I do. Uh, I trust this chair will hold me. 
should. Biggest chair in the house. Mr. Wolf. Yes, Mr. Rainey? Mr. Wolf, am I to understand that the way you have it figured is that Mrs. Lawson killed Gatto, and then to keep the girl from pinning the crime on her, she killed her too? What's the matter, Mr. Rainey? Don't you think the theory holds water? Well, yes. I, I mean, of course it does. Mm, thank you. On the other hand, there is room for doubt. I'm glad to hear you say that, Mr. Wolf. Would you mind explaining? I'll explain, Mr. Lawson. Mr. Goodwin was in this room when Jerry Fay was killed. Right, Archie? Right, boss. He ran as quickly as he could out onto the roof, but your wife was nowhere in evidence. What difference does that make? A good deal, I'd say. Wouldn't you, Archie? Yes, a detail like that would give a jury room for doubt. Oh, don't be a fool. How so, Rainey? Well, I was about to agree with Rainey. I, I mean, on sheer logic. I'm afraid I miss your point, Mr. Lawson. Well, what if Goodwin didn't see her? That proves nothing. She fired the shots and then she ran down the fire escape. What fire escape? The one a few feet beyond the chimney. Mr. Lawson. Yes? Who told you there was a fire escape there? Why, uh, Yeah, I... Yeah, who did? You can't see it from here, Lawson. Well, I, I just imagine there might be. Sensationally accurate imagination, Mr. Lawson. Allow me to congratulate you. I don't know what you have in mind. You have in mind to see your wife convicted of the murder of Pepe Gatto. And so punish them both for having dared to fall in love. I love Celia. I worship her. Yes, that's what you expected me to believe. Hoping, meanwhile, that a hat would convict her. You worshipped her until she became fascinated by a young savage animal known as Pepe Gatto. No. At that point, the worship shifted into reverse. And you went green with hate. Hate that drove you to climb that fire escape that you know so much about and shoot him in the back. You're dreaming. Jerry Faye saw you in the act. And when she was about to divulge your identity to Archie, you killed her too. Meaning to hang her murder on your wife along with the other killing. That's a lie. Mr. Lawson, I didn't bring you here to apprehend your wife. There's really no reason why she should come here. I suggested this visit in the belief that you'd betray some guilty knowledge of the place and circumstances. As you have so obligingly just done. You're clever, aren't you? Monumentally. But a little hasty. So, why? There's gun in my hand. I haven't you noticed? <laughs> of course, sir, but yours is not the only gun in the world. What? Sit still, Arnold. And don't turn around. Your wife, Mr. Lawson. Come in, my dear. Celia. What are you doing here? I came to get a hat that I'd left in Pepe's closet. It suddenly was clear to me what was in the wind. And I thought I'd better remove all evidence that you could possibly use against me. Celia, listen, you must understand. I it understand for you... one thing only. Pepe's gone. And you took him away. Listen, please, if you let me explain, you'll understand. Yeah. Please, honey, help me. Sure, I'll help you. Oh, uh... Celia. Well, that's all, Mr. Wolf. What now? Archie, why is it when you drive it always gets so crowded outside? Will it go tough on her, boss? Why not? She killed a man in cold blood. Though she actually saved our lives while doing so. I hope that helps her at the trial. I hope so, Archie. After all, if she hadn't done what she did, what would have happened to the lobster beast? What lobster beast? The lobster beast that Fritz is making for dinner. <laughs> Hurry, Archie. It really can't be appreciated unless it's eaten hot. You have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Tonight's transcribed story was based on the characters created by Rex Stout. This is an Edwin Fadiman program, produced and directed by J. Donald Wilson. In the cast were Larry Dobkin as Archie Goodwin, and Ann Diamond, Charlotte Lawrence, Gerald Moore, Don Diamond, and Eddie Fields. Next week at this same time, Nero Wolfe and Archie will bring you The Case of the Killer Card. Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. 
Saturday night is date night, and NBC has a lively lineup of music and fun to help your courting along. Tomorrow, Dennis Day brings you a melodic and mirthful 30 minutes, and then Judy Canova gets together with her gang for a sparkling session of mountain-style song and laughter, followed by singing MC Red Foley and his friends on that exciting parcel of Western tunes and mayhem Grand Ole Opry. Here's Sam Spade. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Welcome back. Well, I was a bit premature um, when I read that, when I said that this was going to be our last episode last week with Larry Dopkin in the role of Archie Goodwin. Uh, I was reading off the usually reliable Digital Deli log, and uh, as I had not yet heard the episode. So this was the last Larry Dopkin episode, and next week we'll have another a near a wolf, uh, another Archie Goodwin who was actually among uh, this week's guest stars. One thing I will say is that I do think the writers probably taking Wolf out of the brownstone too much. And this one probably had the least plausible explanation for him leaving. He was heading out from what I could understand because he thought there might be danger. It was kind of a huh moment for me. I guess uh, one reason why they might be having him uh, leave so often is it it's is it does show how the Nero Wolf uh, novels are different from other detective stories. You almost in one way have a divided uh, detective, the body and the brain going separate ways, and the body reporting back to the brain. So it's quite different from other detective shows that they've had on the air. So there may just have been a, I don't know, maybe there's some discomfort about having every episode uh, end with uh, a denouement uh, in the office. But other than that, this was a good episode. We got uh, we got some comments here. Uh, this one comes from Wade uh, from the app. I love your podcast. How about More Scarlet Queen and Adventures by Morse? Uh, they are a favorite of mine. Well, thanks so much, Wade. Uh, to be honest, I have seriously considered and wanted to do, as a bonus for the app and those who have the premium site, do the entire Adventures of the Scarlet, uh, Voyages of the Scarlet Queen, uh, excuse me, uh, series. I continue to think about it. My only question, I think, is time and also listener interest in that. Uh, usually when I p- played another episode of something else, uh, it kind of ties in uh, to our uh, main show. The reason, of course, Voyage of the Star- Scarlet Queen was played was that particular episode was the basis for the Johnny Dollar episode. Adventures uh, by Morse would be difficult just because you can't really play one episode of Adventures by Morse because there are actually eight uh, serialized adventures. But I will keep that in mind if the time and opportunity arises. Got a comment for Jesse, who said, uh, who writes, first of all, Dear Adam, I just wanted to suggest an app for any of your listeners who have an iPod or iPhone. It's called OTR Streamer, and you can listen to pretty much any old uh, show on it, including comedy, westerns, drama, mystery, and more, Dragnet included. Uh, that is a pretty good app. I will say it doesn't have uh, some of the rarer shows, and it doesn't have all the episodes of the show, but I've got it on there. Uh, and it's nice if you just want to download a quick episode and you don't want to get on the computer to mess with it. Uh, she goes on to say, Also, I just want to tell you how much I enjoy both Dragnet and Great Detectives. I think they would make a perfect trio if you added a podcast for more spy shows, like I Was a Communist for the FBI. You know, that is actually a great thought. Because uh, there are a number of shows that you could do kind of on a spyish espionage level. Uh, I've already mentioned in recent weeks listening to and approving of Dangerous Assignment and A Man Called X. You take that with I Was a Communist for the FBI, and you've already got close to 300 episodes if you were doing kind of a weekly show. Gotten a lot of suggestions for listeners for our next podcast, and I have to admit, that is one of the more uh, appealing ones. So once again, great suggestion, and I will keep that, uh, take that under uh, advisement and uh, think about that. All right, well, that'll do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with Let George Do It. In the meantime, if you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. 
Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.